Hello, I'm Crafty Patty, and thank you so much for stopping by to watch another fun video. Today's video is on how to make this little doll blanket. So I can show you how you can make a plain blanket into something much more interesting. So I'm going to be showing you how to add any graphic, any design to your knitting projects, and it will create a beautiful imprint in your knitting like this bunny. Now for experienced knitters, they would know that you need knitter's graph paper. Well, I'm going to admit to my error and I used regular graph paper on my first attempt to knit this doll blanket. And it skewed the dog and skewed the heart and it's all out of proportion. <laughs> So I'm sharing my mistakes with you so you don't make the same mistake. So I'll be demonstrating on a small doll blanket like this one, but you can scale it up if you want to make a larger baby blanket. You just have more graph paper. So what we're going to be doing, you're going to choose your design. You can follow along and do the rabbit with me if you want. You choose your design. You then graph it out on your knitting graph paper and then from there I'm showing you how to make it into an actual knit pearl type of blanket and this pattern will be in the description box below the video so you can use it if you want. So keep watching and I will get you started. Knitting graph paper has rectangles, not squares. You can see that they're wider than they are taller. And you can see this regular graph paper, the square is exactly square. So the challenge is that a knit stitch is wider than it is tall. It's not a square like a graph paper. So that means if you try to design using ordinary graph paper, your knitting will be out of proportion. Using this yarn, just a value of yarn craft smart, and it's a medium four weight, four and a half millimeter knitting needles. My knitting gauge is approximately four stitches and five rows equals one inch or 2.5 centimeters. So by using the knitting design paper, I can count out four little squares here. Well, they're not squares, they're rectangles, sorry. Just to clarify that, rectangles. And I can count off every four. So right here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, the reason you want to know that is that you can figure out how big your blanket's going to be. So let's say my gauge is four stitches to the inch, and you want your design to be ten inches across. And all you have to do is multiply 10 times 4. So then your design chart needs to be 40 stitches wide. What I'm going to do for this little blanket is I'm also allowing some rows on the side for a little border, a little frame around the panel. And I'm also going to have a knitting border on the sides, bottom, and top. So I will allow for that as well. And I'll explain that a little further in the video. This particular knitting design paper is handy too because it's got the darker lines in between so it's easy to count out when you want to transfer your pattern to basically a knitting and purl format. And I'll be showing you in a second here where I found this knitting design paper so you can get the same one if you want this one as well. There are many knitting sites out there that offer free knitting design paper but I did like this one. Also on the graph paper I've just written out here numbers one to number 70. Now of course your height can be any height you want. I am planning on trying to make this little baby blanket about 18 inches in height. So I've allowed for that here as well as allowing for my extra little frame around the panel and my bottom and top border. If you want the same knitting design paper as I've got here, then this is where to find it. Just go into your favorite search engine and type in speedytemplate.com. 
and we'll click on that. And then in their search field, type in letter knitting graph paper. And then just scroll down till you find the one that says free letter size knitting paper. And here you have your knitting paper that has come up. Now just keep scrolling down to the bottom here and you'll see on the bottom here, there is a download. So click on download. And here you have your large knitting design paper and just print it out onto your printer. And this is the area in here where I want a graphic. So I know that it can't be any bigger than this. So I like to look for my graphics in Canva. I have just brought up Canva. I'm going to come over to the right, click on create a design. I'm scrolling to the bottom here and I'm going to click on custom size. And then moving up, I'm going to select eight and a half by 11 because that is the size of my graph paper. By selecting the custom size, it will also bring up your rulers on the top and the side so you can measure out your graphic that you want for your design. Over on my left menu, I'm going to click on Elements. And in Elements, I'm going to click on, just to show you, I'm going to type in Animal Silhouettes because that is the best design that you can get for doing this type of artwork for knitting. So I'm just going to show you there's many different things you can select. Uh, there's cows, pigs, goats, it's just, it, it'll go on forever. Lots of different things you can take a graphic out. So let's type in rabbit silhouette again. And here comes up lots of rabbit silhouettes. So I want one that's probably standing because my actual paper here is actually, for the actual design in here, for my panel, is actually seven inches. And here's another one down here. I'm kind of liking this guy. So as soon as I click on it, it will come off into my canvas on my Canva board. This is where your rulers will come in handy. So I'm just going to move my graphic up into the corner so it measures from zero. And I don't care about my whip. I know it will fix. It's a really narrow design. But you'll see this gray area here. When I drag down on my corner here with my crossbar, when I drag it down, I'm watching this. And I'm watching it until it gets to seven. Now I know I want it to be a really tight fit. So I'm going to take my chances and I'm going to go up to about say seven and a quarter. I'm going to try that. You can just move it back into the center if you want to. You can rename your project so it is also named in your Canva folders as, I'm going to just say, a seven, a seven inch rabbit. And now that we've got it sized the right size, we're going to come up here and we're going to share our project we're going to hit download. We're going to hit download one more time. And you can see that it has now made a document into my folders. And this is where I can use it to save and print. So over here on this one here, we're going to come up and go file. And we're going to print it to my printer. And here's my bunny. And then by putting my graph paper over top, I can see that I've got my perfect fit. I wanted to bunny up to the bottom line and the top line. Now we'll go to the next step. And now I'm just using my window as a light box. It's kind of dark outside today, but it'll be enough that I can see my design through my graph paper. And I'm just matching up my bottom line here and I'm seeing where my design is on the side here. So I've got my three 
rectangles on this side. I've got five up in here, so I'm just going to move it over and make sure that it is lined up. And then once you're lined up, tape it in place. And then come in with a nice sharp pencil and follow your outline that you can see behind the graph paper. So I will continue to trace out my outline and then we'll go to our next step after that. And now I'm going to form my design. And if you've ever done cross stitch, a little bit similar, you'll know that obviously you can't make a rounded corner. You've got to put your design where you've got more than half of your line going through. And my X's are going to represent a purl stitch and my O's are going to represent a knit stitch. So let's start on the bottom of the bunny here. Here we've got a full rectangle and my first row is going to be pearls. So all this row down here would be X'd out. Now I'm not going to fill in all of this because I know that all of this whole row will be a purl stitch. Now this one here has got less than half so I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to go to my next row of knitting. This has got more than half so this is going to be a knit stitch and of course all these right across the row will all be knits. Let's go to the next row. This is a full one, so that will be a purl, and again, cross the row. Next one, this is more than half, so I'm going to make that a full knit stitch, and again, across the row. This one here is just a little bit, so we're going to skip that. This one is more, so we're going to make that a full purl. This one here as well. And now I'm just going to go around my whole outline. I don't need to fill it all in because this is a, a given. Just changing up a knit row and a purl row. Here is our purl row. Next one is a knit row. This one's going to be a purl row. This is about half, so let's take that one and you can always change it up later. When you Put these all in you can assess whether you like the design or not. This is less than half so I'm going to skip that one. Next row, I'm going to take that one. Next row. And I think you've probably got the idea and I will carry it on and I'll fill all these all in and then I will show you the final look. Once I've got my X's and O's in. Then I go around with an eraser and I erase my pencil line because that can give me a better viewpoint on what the design will really look like. So I'm going to go around and I'll erase all this. Oh, and by the way, I did go in with a gel pen and put in my X's and O's over my pencil marks so those won't erase. Just my pencil marks will erase. And now by doing that, I can really get a better feel for the actual design. And I can see here that it makes it look like the paw isn't quite right here. So I'm going to add one more stitch here. And it will square that off a little bit more. And I'm thinking that might look a bit better. And you can just go around and make your adjustments wherever you see fit. I'm thinking up in here. I might have to bring one more X over here and just go around and fix it up. Now how do we take this graph and this design and turn it into a pattern with your knits and pearls? So here's our first row and only think about the panel itself. Don't worry about the borders right now. We'll include that in the pattern later. So here's our first row of knitting. Now what I do is I just help myself out to know that when I'm working this way, this is my knit row. So I put a little arrow just to remind myself when I'm working this way, 
This is my Perl row. Because as you can see, our X's are pearls. So in order to have this imprint show, we have to do a knit stitch up to that. And then our imprint is going to be in the opposite into the pearl stitch. And then we're back to knitting. So for our first row, being that each one of these is a count of five. So we've got five, 10, and then 11, 12. So our pattern will start with knit 12, and then we're gonna count all our X's, and there is 16. And then you can count if you want. Here's a group of five, there's a group of five. So that's five, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then on our other side, we count to our border. So we've got five, 10, 11, 12, so knit 12. So our first row is knit 12, purl 16, knit 12. Let's go to our next row. So our next row up, I just used the ruler to keep me in place of where I am, so I know what row I'm on. And now we're going this way. So we're starting with purl stitches. So now if you count over, we've got 5, 10, 11. So we're purling 11. And now let's count our knit stitches. We've got, here's a grouping of 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18. And then on the other side, we have purl 11. There's 5, 10, and one left over is 11. So I hope that makes sense to you. Let's do one more row with you, and then you'll know how to create your pattern. There's row 1, 2, and this is row 3. Row 3, we're starting on the knit direction. We're going this way. So again, Knit 11, purl 18, and knit 11. So I think that should make sense to you, I hope. And then you just continue up and do your whole pattern. And then you can write it out. And I'll do that, and then I'll have it for you as well in the description box. Just a little bit of a trick. When you're working out your pattern, make sure that when you've got your stitches down here, that all these stitches will always equal 40 stitches. I had already made a mistake on row two, and I'm going, wait a minute, this doesn't add up to 40. Where did I go wrong? So I can go back, check, and now that I've got 40 stitches, I know that I am correct. Now let's talk about borders. All along the very outside, of my design here will be a little border like this. And this part of the blanket, which is all my inside panel, I've got my four on this side that I've kept and my four on this side. Now I want my blanket a little bit taller. So I've added a few more rows on the bottom and the top to compensate because I want it to be approximately 18 inches in length. So what we're going to do is after we've got our little border like this done, then we're going to come in and we're going to start doing these rows in here. So as you'll see on the pattern, it'll be knit four because I want you to have this border like this, and then you'll be doing your panel. And then you'll be going knit four, on the other side. So you have to keep remembering to knit four because the way I've got my pattern done, because I'm not going to include that every time. So it's going to be a given that you can always remember to knit four in the beginning of the row and knit four on the end of the row. And we talked about gauge in the beginning of the video so you know how big to make your blanket. And I've counted out four stitches along here because this graph paper is five stitches. So now I know every four equals one inch. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I know my blanket is going to be approximately 12 inches in width and I can measure out also my length. So let's go into where we've got a definite five. So the five would start right here is my line here. 
So let's count it this way. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's an approximation again because your gauge isn't going to be exact, but that'll be close enough. So I'm going to start and we're going to do the first little bit together for you until you've got the idea. And then by all means, you can follow along. And if you want to knit this exact little baby doll blanket, then by all means, go to the description box below and I've got it all written out for you. Your graph paper is also going to tell you how many stitches you need to cast on. Right now, I've got all these groupings of five, so I've got 40 right here. I have additional four stitches on the right and four stitches on the left. So I know I need to cast on 48 stitches. I do a knitted cast on, and so if you don't care for knitted cast on, by all means, you can do any cast on you prefer. If you've never done one, then what I do is I just bring my left needle into the stitch on the right, wrap around. If I don't take that stitch off, I leave it on, and then I come back in and I come in again and make another stitch. That is my knitted cast on. I'm going to continue and cast on my 48 stitches and we'll see you at the end. I have my 48 stitches cast on and now all you're going to do is knit six rows all even knit six rows and I'll come back to you when I've got my six rows knitted. I have knit my six rows and now we're going to continue with making our little border on the side and starting the inside panel. So we're going to knit our first row will be still all knit. So let's just do one more row of knit. And I'll meet you at the end. And my last stitch. And now for the second row, we are going to knit four because that's going to create our little borders. And then for the middle of our panel, we are now going to purl. So we're going to purl 40 and knit four on the end. So let's purl 40. And I will come and see you at the end again because you don't need to watch all of this. And here's my last purl stitch. And you'll always have four left over. And then you're going to knit those last four stitches on every row. I'm going to repeat that two more times for a total of six rows. So we've now done our cast on, knit six rows, and we've done our side borders and inside the panel. Row one, knit, and row two, knit four, purl 40, knit four, and repeated that two more times, and this is what it looks like. There's your side borders for me, and here's the inside panel. And just like on our little graph paper here, this is our border. And we've just come up to here now. And we've knit this area here. And now we're going to start our actual design. And as you can see, you're on your knit side of your knitting. And that's why we're coming this way on our knits. So we're going to be knitting. And then we're going to purl to start the imprint of our bunny. And just remember that you always need to knit those first four stitches to keep your border. Once you've knit those first four, we are going to start our imprint in the panel. So there's our four knits. And now as you see on our pattern, we're going to knit 12, purl 16 and knit 12 for our first row of our imprint of our rabbit. I'm going to start again. I'm going to start by knitting 12 and I will carry on to the end of the row and we'll show you what we've got at the end. And here's my last two stitches of my knit 12 in the panel and I will have four stitches left over 
for my border and there we are. So we're knitting those last four. And now we're on our purl side of our knitting. And just like the graph paper, here is my purl roll going this way as I did my arrows. So we know that we're knitting the purls first and then all my circles are knit and then finishing with the purl and of course our borders, knit four, knit four. So here again on the pattern, my next row is purl 11, knit 18, purl 11. And remember again, knit four on the first and the last four stitches. So here I am on the start of my row, even though I'm on the purl side, it will always be knit on those first four stitches, whether you're on a knit row or a purl row, always knit. And once I've got those first four knit, then we're gonna do our pattern, which is purl 11, knit 18, and purl 11. So now we're doing our purls. So I'll just finish up this row and get back to you. So here's the first two rows of the imprint design of the rabbit that we are doing together. And that is your first two stitch, or sorry, your first two rows that you've done right here. So being that when you're reversing your purl onto your knit side, you'll get the imprint of the design. So I think you should probably be able to figure that out pretty well just by going along and following my pattern and just keep knitting all the rows, just like I've said, and you will come up with this darling little rabbit. I have finished row 70, and this is what we have so far. This is what it looks like with the imprint, with the pearl forming the bunny and the knit on the back, and it also makes the imprint on the other side. So if you turn it over, you'll then have the knit as the imprint in the purl in the background. And now I just have to add my six rows up here, just like on the bottom, and add my border, and then we can cast off, and our little cute doll blanket will be complete. If you're finding that it's not sitting nice and flat for you, then you can come in with a steam iron and that will just even it all out for you. Just a really light steam iron, you know, you're not even actually going right down on it or just a really light tap, just to steam. And that's enough that it will hold it down and it'll define your pattern just that little tiny bit more. So right in here, just Hold it down a little bit and down in here. Okay, that's all it takes, just enough to tap it down. Just a little bit. You can do the other side too if you want. I mean, a true blocking, you would pin it all, but hey, this is just a little blanket for a doll. It's just enough to make the pattern show a bit more forgiving. And here's what it looks like after a little bit of a steaming. This is on the knit side, and there we have it on the purl side. And like I said, you can put absolutely any kind of an imprint on here whatsoever. I just chose a bunny because she likes bunnies. You could make this into a larger blanket, and then you would just have to put more graph paper together so you could work out your pattern. Or you could do little tiny animals here and there, little hearts here and there. Or you could even do a name and put it out in block letters for a name. So much you can do, but I just wanted to show you this so you can put a beautiful little imprint in a blanket.